In this short play, there is hardly any story to tell, despite its title, The Zoo Story. Just two characters are in the play, Peter and Jerry. Peter is a man in his early 40s, neither fat nor gaunt, neither handsome nor homely. He wears tweeds, smokes a pipe, carries horn-rimmed glasses. Although he is moving into middle age, his dress and his manners would suggest a man younger. Jerry is a man in his late thirties, not poorly dressed but carelessly. What was once a trim and lightly muscled body had begun to go to fat, and while he is no longer handsome, it is evident that he once was. His fall from physical grace should not suggest debauchery. He has to come closer to it a great weariness. From the text, we learn that Peter is married, has two children, both girls and the girls have a parakeet each kept in a cage in their bedroom. There are cats too. He has an executive position with a small firm, a publishing house earning around $18,000 a year. Jerry lives alone. Jerry says, I live in a four-story brownstone rooming house. I don't have one wife two daughters, two cats, and two parakeets. As the curtain goes up, we see the Central Park. It is a Sunday afternoon in summer. Peter is sitting on a bench in the park. He does that quite often. He is reading a book. Jerry enters. He has just been to the zoo. He manages to strike a conversation with Peter. Though the beginning is somewhat stumbling, it gets smooth. The intimacy grows. There is tickling and poking. At the end, Jerry demands possession of the bench where Peter is seated, even though there is another bench quite close by with none occupying it. Tension mounts. There is a violent confrontation. Jerry throws a knife at Peter's feet and orders him to pick it up and hold it in front of him, not to attack, but to defend. He holds it in front of him, not to attack, but to defend himself. Jerry totally unexpectedly rushes towards Peter and gets impaled on the knife. Jerry is fatally wounded. He asks Peter to save himself by going away. Peter goes away, a thoroughly distraught man. Jerry dies. The curtain comes down. That is the end of the play. The zoo story seems to partake of a few of the characteristics of the absurd theater. The language quite often is apparently inconsequential. The relationships are unsure or inexplicable. Motivations both for speech and action seem governed less by rational processes than by a meaningless spontaneous reflex. The meaning is elusive and like so many absurd plays, there is no beginning, no middle, no end.